Berkatha Yahweh, Berkatha Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ. Barachah Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, all in charity. It's a brother Mathate from Great Millstone Camp to branch out in Des Moines. And um, as you can see on your screen, this is a video. Um, I believe this is the uh, uh, the brother, um, the big bro Ashayah from uh, uh, from Charlotte. And um, as you can see, it says the red people revealed. And man, it's, it's, it's a beautiful video, man. This 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 devil's exposed, man, on all fronts, you know. So I just want to um, and I share this clip, you know, either on the um, in the comment section or in in the description box. But um, yeah, man, I just wanted to further add, you know, this devil is being exposed, man, and we gonna start here, you know, which is um where I get the um the title from. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah. I know it's Jeremiah 48. Oh, maybe it's up some slack. I'm sorry. Or is it Jeremiah 49? I'm sorry. Yep. This is Jeremiah 49. And I start at eight. It says, flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, which Dedan is um, a, a, a tribe of Esau, for lack of a better word. It says, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him, right? Because Dedan was one of his sons. Verse nine, if grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If these by night, they will destroy till they have enough. But I have made Esau bear. So the Lord is saying what? That when grape gatherers come, don't they leave some some some, some grapes that, that that fall through, right? When thieves come and take certain things, don't they take till they had enough? But here it is: the Lord said He's going to take everything from this devil man. This He's going to fully expose this this creep. It says verse ten, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. You see that? This devil is not going to be able to hide himself, man. Why? Because he's being consumed with by the spirit of the Lord's mouth. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians 2. I'm going to start at 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that happened. We discontinue from our heritage. According to Ezekiel, the 37 chapter, what? The, uh, the valley was full of dry bones. But what happened, man? The spirit of prophecy entered into us, Right? Starting with Elder Abba Bivens, who is Elijah, according to Malachi, the fourth chapter, who had to come turn the hearts of the fathers to the son and the heart of the sons back to the fathers, man. It says, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And this is the time we're living in. We fell away. Now we're returned. And now this devil has been revealed. And it says what? That that day shall not come. What day? The day of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. The day of vengeance and the day of our salvation. Lord will, uh, we're found worthy, man. But this devil, the son of perdition, is being exposed. Verse 4, who, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worshipped, so that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. And we can see that through what? Through his depictions. He set himself up as the son of the Most High. And according to the scriptures, if you've seen the son, you see the father. So what? This devil is saying that the father, the heavenly father, looks like him. He paints the angels. That looks like him. He even say what? That he's the Israelites, man. Right? But also in action. What is this devil doing? He got artificial wounds. <laughs> he got artificial intelligence. He got GMO foods. He got his heart program. See, even in his actions, he's calling himself the most high, man. He's calling himself a power. He's calling himself a God. But as it is written in the book of Ezekiel, will you say you a God before the before him that slayeth thee? See, our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to come and lay this devil down, man. Verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? 
And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And we in that time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. And that mystery of iniquity was the Romans during that time, which that deadly wound was healed. So that so the mystery of iniquity is working right now as we speak. But guess what? It's not a mystery anymore, man. To those who are initiated. To those who are enlightened through the Holy Spirit, right? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Meaning the Most High is allowing this devil to do what he's doing, man. So that the Most High may fulfill his will and his purpose. You see? Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, man. It says what? That he shall uh, be consumed with the spirit of his mouth, man. And that's why this devil is uh, uh, putting into legislation. <clears throat> Come, uh, uh, trying to silence us, man. The EU, right? Or, or what, what is that? Um, yeah, the United Nations. It, it was the United Nations, man. They came together and said, oh, well, we need to put a stop to all these quote unquote conspiracy theories. Now they coming after uh, uh, um, uh, Alex Jones. Now they coming after Andrew Tate, <laughs> right? They, we, we 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 know we we know what this devil uh, uh, got planned, man. As the scripture says, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. So we know what he's gearing towards, man. See, this devil is making these subtle moves here and there because ultimately he wants to silence the true men of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, the the men who are speaking the truth, man, the true truth. The true truth. I'm going to say that again, man. Right? Because there's only one. You see? Because once again, this devil is being exposed. This is the book of uh, Malachi 1 and 4. I'll start at 3. I'll start at 2. All right, matter of fact, I'll start at 1. It says, The burden of the word of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever, man, until this devil is eradicated in the kingdom of heaven after a thousand years of, uh, of servitude, man, of slavery, right? Because the Lord throwing this devil down, what? Back during the Roman Empire, when, that, when the Roman Empire uh, uh, sustained a deadly wound, that was the Lord throwing this devil down. And what happened? This devil came back into power according to Revelation, the 20th chapter. The Lord allowed him to come back out and be loosed a little season. That was his renaissance. That was his rebirth. Right. And that's him coming back into power, saying that he's going to build again. But what does the Lord say he's going to do? He's going to throw this bitch down, man. He's going to annihilate all of America and, 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 and Esau's power structure. You see, because the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, it says what? You shall call them the border of wickedness, man. Well, why is the earth? Full of wickedness. This Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Going back to that uh, Second Thessalonians. He showeth himself that he is the most high. Who covereth the face of the ultimate judge being our Lord? And he and, 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 and our Lord Yahweh committed all judgment unto the, uh, to his son, our Lord Yahweh Shai. Well, who painted himself as the savior? Who painted themselves as, as the Israelites, according to uh, Psalms, the 82nd chapter? It says that the Most High ruleth amongst the gods. He judges amongst the gods. When you go into that word gods, it's Allahayim, which one of the definitions is judges. So the Lord has set the Israelites up to be the judges of the earth. But who did this devil say are the Israelites, man? <laughs> right? So he covered the faces, man. So this right there is showing you who the wicked is. You see, this devil has been exposed, Right? Because here it is, it says here in Proverbs 29, in verse 2, it says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And we can see the whole earth is languishing, man. The whole earth is mourning. 
Once again, letting us know who's in rulership. <clears throat> Let's jump down to verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. You see? It says when the wicked are multiplied, transgression in increaseth. Look, look at the wickedness that's going on throughout the earth. Right? And as it is written in Sirach, the, uh, uh, the 10th chapter, it says, as the king, as the ruler is, so are the officers, so are the rest of the people, which is why this, this world is outwardly corrupt. There's another one. Um, walk. Every side. In Psalms 12 and 8, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted, man. And who's in the rulership? According to the book of Ecclesiastes, our king, King Solomon, he's seen uh, servants upon horses. He's seen the vilest men in rulership. And he's seen the princes, the true rulers of the earth, walking on the ground as servants, man. That's the true, that's the Israelites, man. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You see? Because what happened when this devil got into power? See, this devil has been exposed, man. Hey, it ain't no turning back either. As it is written in Isaiah the 47 chapter, man, there is no throne sitting in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Make bare the leg, uncover the thigh. This devil has been exposed once again, right? And it ain't no covering it back up. See, that was a part of this devil's power. It was his secrecy. Now nah, it ain't a secret no more, right? This is the book of uh, 1 Maccabees 1, and I'll start at 1. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. So we know this is talking about Alexander the Crete, Alexander the Great, as he's known in history. Verse 2, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations insomuch that the earth was quiet before him. Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up, which goes into prophecy, man. Daniel, the eighth chapter speaks about how the, uh, that, that, that rough goat, which is the king of Grecia, how he didn't touch the ground. Meaning he, 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 he took down the, uh, the place speedily, right? But also it tells us here in the book of Zechariah, this is the book of Zechariah 1 and 8. And I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and it's night, because why? Because Esau is ruling. Wickedness is exalted. This is the time of darkness, man, right? Meaning this is Esau's rulership. And it says what? That that red horse, he's seen it at night. This is Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red. Horse represents power, right? And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So why is this why is this sword red? Let's go to Genesis the 25th chapter. The sword. Why is the sword red? Why is the horse red? It's Genesis 25 and 25. <clears throat> I'll start at 23. I'll start at 21. I'll start at 20. It's uh, Gen uh Genesis 25 and 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai said unto her, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, man. So Esau came out red all over. It says like a hairy garment. See, people like to say, oh, see, he was, he was, he was red and hairy. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. It was likened unto a red garment, man. You see? Just like when you see these little Edomite babies born today. They're born red, crying, screaming at the top of their lungs, man. Right? And what did it say in that revelation? It said that a great sword was given unto him. This is Genesis 27.
and 39. I started 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessed my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of the heaven from above. So it's pretty much the same blessing that uh, uh, that Jacob received. But see, Esau would get it through bloodshed. Esau would get it through the sword. And getting it through the sword would mean that his blessing would only be temporary. Right? Jacob's would be eternal. Verse 40. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. You see that? So by the sword would his devil get these things. But what did it tell us in Sirach the 10th chapter? It says by unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by the seat, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So this devil's kingdom was never meant to last long, man. <laughs> you see that? So let's go back to Revelation. Let's read Revelation 6 and 4 again. And there went out another horse that was red. So this is Esau Edom. You see? And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Showing you that this is Esau Edom. So let's go back to Zechariah 1 and 8. And I saw by night and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. And the myrtle trees represents Israel. And what? We at the bottom of society, man. And behind him were there red horses speckled and white. Then said I, O my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom, and, and, and this is literal, you know, what Zechariah has seen in the vision. But just applying those myrtle trees in the spirit. Because the word myrtle uh, uh, goes back into um, Hadassah, if I'm not mistaken. That was Hadassah's name. Yep, which is Esther, you know, and uh, according to Jeremiah 6 and 2, the Lord likened uh, um, the daughter of, of, of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. See, a lot of these uh, uh, are, are the, the literal women of Israel that, that, that lived and did uh, great things through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shai. They, they, they represent Israel or the elect, you know, in the spirit, man. Just like uh, 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 Mary, when she poured the ointment on our Lord, Yahweh, Shai. Right. Or that woman that was diseased 12 years, you know, but but that, 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 that that's a, another lesson for another time. <clears throat> this is uh, back in Zechariah one. And nine again, then said, I, oh, my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are they whom Yahweh by Shem Yahweh have sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro through the earth and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest, man. Who can make war with the beast as it is written in Revelation the 13th chapter, <laughs> right? So it says the earth sitteth still and is at rest, meaning that quiet because this devil has put everything down. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 10. In verse 12, wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, right? That's uh, our punishment, our falling away, right? I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. It's talking about Esau because Esau is the modern day Assyrian. <clears throat> verse 13, for he saith, by the strength of my hand, I have done it and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. And I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures. And I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people. And as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. <laughs> you see that? Showing you that what? The earth is given into the hands of this devil, man. Let's go back. And it started with this creep right here. First Maccabees 1 and 3. And went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations and so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. 
Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years, then died and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth, man. When the vilest men are exalted, the wicked walk on every side, man. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth. You see that? This devil has been exposed. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how do you know Alexander was an Edomite? Well, all one has to do is trace his lineage. It happened. Let's start at one again. And it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian. So Alexander's father, whose name is Philip, was called a Macedonian, right? Well, where else do Ma Macedonian appear within the scriptures? Ah, uh, in the book of uh, Esther, right? Additions to Esther. 16. And straight to the point, verse 10. For Haman, it say Ammon, but it's Haman, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood. So he wasn't a, he wasn't a Persian and far distant from our goodness. And as a stranger received of us, has so far forth obtained the favor that we show toward every nation as that he was called our father and was continually honored of all the next person unto the king. But he not bearing his great dignity went about to deprive us of our kingdom and life. Having by manifold and cunning deceits sought of us the destruction as well of as well of Mordecai, who saved our life and continually procured our good, as also of blameless Esther, Hadassah, partaker of our kingdom with their whole nation. For by these means he thought finding us destitute of friends to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians, man. And this is one of the reasons why Mordecai, uh, not Mordecai, but um why Haman hated Mordecai even more outside of that. He was an Edomite and Mordecai being a Jew that Mordecai thwarted his plans of assassinating the Persian king, man. <laughs> you see. So this devil thought to what to translate the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians, but it wasn't time. But here it is. It says what Haman being a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha. Now, let's get that. In the regular scriptures here in Esther. I believe it's the third chapter. Yep. Esther three and one. After these things, did King Asaharis promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And that's why Sirach says, um, let me just get this real quick. Because this, 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 uh, this precept is an example of this devil. Um... I might got two precepts in my spirit. Yeah, this is one, but uh, the other one is in Sirach 10, if I'm not mistaken. Sirach 19 and 26, there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit, casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. And if for lack, that word want means uh, lack, and if for want of power, he be hindered from sinning, yet when he find an opportunity, he will do evil. That's why it tells us here in the 10th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's Sirach 10. Or is it 12? Yep, 12 and 10. It's Sirach 12 and 10. Never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked thereby. That's exactly what this devil tried to do unto the Persians, man. Right? But Mordecai thwarted those plans through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shah. Now let's go back. Uh, Esther 3 and 1. After these things, and see, that's why, we, that's why we shouldn't trust none of these uh, Edomites, man. None of these heathen. 
And that can be applied to two thirds of our people as well, man. Trust ye not in a friend. Uh, 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 put ye not trust in a God. Roughly paraphrasing Jeremiah the ninth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. This Esther, back in Esther 3 and 1. After these things did King Osaharis promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him, man. So it says what? In, in, in the additions of Esther, they called him a Macedonian, the son of Ham Hamadatha. Here it's calling him an Agagite. Because the, 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 the Macedonians were Agagites. Now, what's an Agagite? Well, all one way I have to do is continue to trace. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15 and 8. We get you straight to the point. I start at 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to shore that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. So here it is. Haman was of this lineage of Agag. And Agog here showing you that he's an Amalekite. Now, what's, what's, what the hell is an Amalekite, you might ask? Well, let's go to Genesis, the 36th chapter. Let's start at the 8th verse. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So in Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, when it says, set thy face against Mount Seir, then we know it's talking about who? Esau, Edom. Verse 9. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's son, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, Rehuel, the son of Bashamath, the wife of Esau, and the sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kanaz, and Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife, man. Amalek was a grandson of Esau. So Alexander the Crete, his lineage traced all the way back to Esau. So that's when the devils came into power, man. That's when the wicked came into rulership. Right? Started with the Greeks. Prospered during the Romans. Then the Lord wounded the head. And then what? Then the rebirth came in this present time we're living in now. Awaiting the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, to remove this devil from power permanently, man. And it ain't going to be no rising up again after that. You see? So, man, I, you know, I just wanted to, you know, add to this video, you know, and, and, and provide precepts, man, that this devil has been exposed and he shall not be able to hide himself anymore. So, Lord, we all hope this was edifying. Thawadi Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Barakah HaKodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Hey, Shalom.